how can you negotiate an EIDL loan increase and is a scarf required to be involved? Hey, good evening, everybody. This is LA Late. This is Evenings LA Late, our evening program that starts with a check and then goes to EIDL. I got a lot of great questions overnight about EIDL, so I'm going to answer some of them shortly right now. As you know, EIDL is part of our one hour programming block on Evenings LA Late every night that starts at 6.45 with a check, then goes to EIDL at 7.15. Pacific Standard Time. EIDL loan, which is located at sba.gov, is a loan that you can get if you're a sole practitioner, independent contractor, or business owner impacted by COVID-19. It's a very simple process. It's still live. There is no grant. That's one of the questions I got overnight. Can I get more grant money? There's no more grant. There's no more EIDL grant. You can't increase the grant. You can't decrease the grant. What's open is EIDL loan. EIDL loan is a 3 point, approximately 3.75% 30-year fixed interest rate loan that has no principal and interest due the first year, so it's really quite great. The loan is based upon your 2019 tax return, and the calculation is very simple. Revenue minus cost of goods sold divided by two. Now, a lot of people have asked questions about that over the last four, three months, but last night I got a really great question which said, and it was a question I've never heard before, which was, hey, my 2018 numbers are higher and more impressive than my 2019 numbers. Basically, the person could get a higher loan based upon 2018 numbers than 2019 numbers. But even making even more interesting this discussion was the person had not yet filed their 2019 tax returns were on an extension. So how does one approach this? Ultimately, SBA does not give guidance about this. We do know as a matter of how what they do provide guidance on is that their lending amount is based upon 2019 numbers, based upon your representation of those 2019 numbers. Now, what's important to understand is that the form is still self-authenticating as to the numbers initially. So for example, if you go in the form and say you made $10,000 as an Uber and Lyft driver, gross rev, 2019 and your cost of goods sold was zero, then they're going to give you a loan for $5,000. That's $10,000 minus zero divided by two. Revenue minus cost of goods sold divided by two. $5,000. Pretty straightforward. Now, what happens when we get to the issue of people who have not filed 2019 tax return? I always tell them, hey, get that tax return on file. Get it on file and then apply to SBA. Don't apply to SBA without a 2019 tax return on file. Because ostensibly, I don't have the form in front of me, but I believe the application asks you what your 2019 numbers are. Pretty straightforward, just get the return on file. But what if your 2019 numbers are not as impressive as your 2018 numbers? It's a hard decision what to do. Ultimately, the best decision might be the following, that you apply for the EIDL loan Put your 2019 numbers in there. Get back the offer that might not be particularly how much of a loan that you wanted to have. And then do a reconsideration to increase the loan amount. Now, what is in the reconsideration and how do you increase a loan amount? Well, the, the whole nature of increasing loan amounts with SBA has been really an unclear, inconsistent, and very fluid situation over the last few months. When this channel first launched, I gave the following advice about how to increase loan amounts. I said, one, when offered a loan amount, when offered a loan amount by SBA in their portal, do not accept it. Contact SBA and ask to increase the loan. Call them on the phone, reach out to them, go into the portal, sign, send something in the portal, send them an email. Don't accept it unless you can increase it. That appeared to be the case for a very, very long time. But I have heard some cases since then in which people have been told, no, you have to accept it and then go into recon. I have never seen that to be the case. I have always seen it to be the case that when offered a loan amount and you think it's too low, that you have documentation to support a higher loan amount, 
that to accept it, that not to accept it, not to accept it, and reach out to SBA to increase it. That's the first thing. If you have an SBA loan offer and you accept it and then you want to reduce it, uh, really impossible, if not next to not, not, not available. By all indication of this, of what I've done with this channel since the since day one, I've never heard of a case where someone who has accepted an EIDL loan and wants to then later reduce it after going through the acceptance by them as well. Basically, you accept a loan and they accept the loan and then they then, then there's agreement on $50,000. It doesn't matter if you haven't received the $50,000. You can't go back and say, I want $10,000 because you've already accepted it. They just don't allow it. If you're stuck and you really don't want the loan and you're like, I just don't want this then, you can give the money back and you're fine. You can literally give the money back within the first year and you don't have to, you're not, you don't own anything, principal or interest. Now, can you increase a loan after you have a loan offer, after you're fully funded and you want more money? Yes. How do you do it? Oh, that is really not one of the easiest tasks when it comes to SBA. Uh, it's like a hot night, like it is here as I've started to struggle in the, in the muggy weather out here on the West Coast tonight. It's been very bad all day long. That how do you increase a loan when you've been funded and you want more money and you qualify for more money? I'm going on the setup that you do qualify for more money. SBA's current guidance is that you do it through reconsideration. Yeah, it doesn't make inherent sense that reconsideration, which is denial of something, is now handling loan increases, but they are. Ironically, of the three mentors in this channel, the first one, well, there's, I think there's now more than three, but the original, the first three, the first one I did his loan increase, that's how I met him. The next one, is is actually doing an EIDL loan increase of their own loan currently. The third one um, had a loan offer and got it escalated himself. Now, let me tell you the nature of what happened between the three of them, as far as I recall. The first one, I handled the loan increase. So he had a loan offer and he did not accept it. He followed my advice, he did not accept it. He followed my advice how to increase it and he got the loan increase. That's his situation. The second one got the loan, got funded, time went on, thought the pandemic is worse, which it is, and realized I need more money. So is now going back to SBA to get more money and going through recon, not still resolved. So certainly a person to reach out to. Uh, the third person is one of my original OGs, my original 100 viewers of this channel. He had a loan offer literally at the very at the almost the very beginning of of this channel's existence in April $5000 or $4000 it was literally next to nothing it took him all the way to upwards of last 2 weeks ago to get his loan increased he had to go up and go down and go up and go down it was not a very easy process he went through all my advice of this channel but did it on his own accord he got it done he's now a mentor ironically of all three mentors they're all loan increase situations it's ironic the situation was we're in now compared to where we were back in April. Back in April, I was telling people, you take the amount of money that you need based upon what you think is going on. Unfortunately, what was going on then is different than what's going on now. At that time, a lot of viewers, and I'm not just saying a lot, a ton, like 10,000, 5,000, 20,000, a lot of viewers accept, asked for loans exactly for $24,900. It was that strange number that SBA must have said, who the hell is this person telling them to do $24,900 exactly? It became sort of a running joke because I had said, you know, take an amount like 24900 because of collateralization rules that kick in at $25,001. And ironically, it just caught on. And people kept on taking exactly the amount that I was referencing in the, in the, in the video as an example of something that's under $25,001. I mean, they could have done 24999 24, but it was always 24900 And they took it. Some of those since then have reached out and have said, I need more money now. I'm not going to survive with 24000 So they've gone back in the process. Here's the good news and here's the bad news. The good news is that if you want the money, the money's there. SBA has the money. It's not disappearing. 
Also good news is that if you qualify for the money, you can get it based upon the loan calculation, your credit score over 590 Experian Vantage 3.0. The bad news is it takes a while. The other bad news is that if you're doing a loan increase, they're going to want to see your tax returns if they haven't seen them before to substantiate your claim. So that's why you have to have your taxes on file. And you're going to be into the collateralization zone, <laughs> that zone, you mean the triangle zone of collateralization, it kicks in at $25,001, which means that they can take any of your assets, any of your assets, that are essentially working capital, a vaguely defined term that basically includes anything uh, in your business, if you can't pay your interest uh, and principal. But the other twist that came out of sort of nowhere is that current lending uh, requirements that SBA simply changes by the minute now puts the cap at $150,000 per loan. So whereas this channel used to be getting people $200,000, $300,000, $400,000 all loans, it was, I remember the days, it was really quite fun and exciting and strange where I would see in the comments someone had a credit score. It was a very, um, it was a very Hamishy sort of small niche, very family oriented time at that time when the channel was very small. And I would have people in the comments say, I applied this date. I got a credit pull this date. I got a grant this date. I would read their comments on, on air. I wouldn't know their comments until I read a cold and I'd see it and I'd say, oh. And then they say my credit score was, at that time there was no hard credit number like it is now at 570, 590. It was just all over the place. And people would say, I was a, st I had people who were 560s and they got a hundred, two hundred thousand dollar loans. It's just what happened. I had people who were 620s and didn't get a loan. I just, it's just, everything was all over the place. But I had people who got 200, 300 thousand dollar loans. I also had people who got $1,000 loans, $1 loans, $2,000 loans, $2 loans. I said it's a computer glitch, not Mitch, not bitch, but glitch. Contact SBA, that still seems to be the case. Ultimately, if you have questions on how to do EIDL issues after you got your SBA.gov application on file, go into the comments below and find the private and re ask for access into the private and there's mentors in there that can help you. There's a purple box when you come in that says start here, purple tab, read that purple tab and that's where you find your mentors. As always, stay informed, stay, stay smiling, stay focused. Coming up tomorrow on Mornings LLA, more about the shambles that happened tonight in the second stimulus check situation. It's just all over the place. As always, be good and have a great evening.